The encryption of the popular cloud storage service Mega.io has recently been broken in a number of different possible attacks. Now, one thing that really stands out about Mega is that they market themselves as the privacy company, okay? They literally have it on the tagline of their LinkedIn page. And in theory, there is some truth to this because Mega provides end-to-end -end encryption that is supposed to be user controlled. So you're supposed to be the only one who ultimately has access to your files on their servers. Now, the way that Mega does encryption is, well, kind of interesting. So there is a hierarchy of keys that they used, which are created based on the password that you use to secure your account. This is at the root of the keychain. That password's used to derive an authentication key and then an encryption key. So the authentication key is used to identify you. And of course, the encryption key is used to actually encrypt your data so that only you can access it. Uh, and there's a number of attacks that can be done against this encryption scheme that Mega uses. So there's an RSA key recovery attack, there's a plain text recovery, and these two are done together. The plain text recovery is acquired before you can start doing the framing attack, which lets you insert arbitrary files into a user's file storage which is really creepy when you think about the kinds of things that could be done with something like that. Now, in order to do these attacks, an adversary would have to either take over Mega's servers so that they could control the API, which would actually be a much more effective way to pull off this attack, because if it's successful, then you could bypass the requirement uh, of the user having to log in a whole bunch of times, uh, as you'll see in a moment, to do this RSA key recovery attack. But in the case of this proof of concept attack that was done here, the adversary has installed a malicious TLS root certificate on the victim system to allow that attacker to impersonate Mega, which could potentially happen through social engineering. Um, probably going to be much easier to do that than hacking Mega. Uh, now, ultimately, the problem is boiling down to Mega's end-to-end -end encryption having some problems in its implementation. I'm not that knowledgeable on cryptography to tell you exactly what's wrong, but I've seen some people uh, describe this as a bizarre jungle gym of a cryptanalysis puzzle, what Mega is doing with their cryptography here. Uh, so here we're going to see an example of this attack. This is an automated uh, browser that's being run to simulate the victim logging into Mega multiple times. And then this is what the attacker is running on their machine, uh, the man in the middle, and then they're listening for the public key. So this is the first login attempt. And you can see that here they recovered the first bit. So they're um, pretty much making them do it multiple times so that they can effectively guess what this key is. And I believe it takes them a minimum of about 500 guesses, uh, 512 guesses, depending on uh, how exactly they're doing the guesses. So here we see them going multiple times, but eventually it's going to output their private key. And so here he's got it inside of a file and he's uh, got it blurred out here, but this is the private key of the victim, their RSA keys. So obviously logging in multiple times is kind of different than how most users are going to be using Mega. They're probably going to stay logged in, you know, just have their credentials cached in their browser. Uh, they're probably, it's probably gonna take you a while to get them to log back in 500 times or so, but still um, that is, a, a very low threshold for breaking the key, right? Like imagine you're a secure user on here, right? You're using good passwords, maybe 20 characters, alphanumeric. It would take so many guesses to try to break that kind of a password. But the way that they're securing this key, uh, it kind of breaks it down to 500 guesses. You know, that's easier to break than a four digit pin. And the even more disturbing vulnerability in my opinion, is the framing attack. So 
like I said, this lets you essentially inject a uh, file or multiple files into the user's Mega Upload Cloud. So again, you still need that TLS root certificate or you need to have taken over uh, Mega servers. And so now they're listening for the login. Okay, so they've done, I believe this is the first stage and then the logout is the second stage. Okay, yeah, so that was the end of the attack phase one. So now they're starting the framing attack. Okay, so the first login fails, they get fresh node keys. And now they've had the forged file injected. So when they log in here, there's gonna be an additional file in their cloud that uh, they didn't want. Yeah, this hackercat.png. So yeah, as you saw, that was not there before. So of course you can imagine all sorts of ways that this particular hack could be used against somebody. They call it a framing attack after all. Uh, you could frame somebody by uploading illegal documents to their cloud storage. You could play a prank on your friends by first hacking Area 51 and then stealing blueprints of alien spacecrafts and make all the alphabet boys go wild trying to track down those blueprints but then you upload them to your friend's mega cloud and they take them to Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, don't actually do that, by the way. Uh, the government is going to probe you if you try to get their top secret tech. But Mega Upload, they did respond to this issue and they made some changes to their software. However, they didn't go with the recommended countermeasures that were proposed by the team that won this bug bounty from Mega, uh, which includes implementing opaque and asymmetric opaque protocol that's secure against pre-computation attacks. And I think part of the reason for this is that it would have required users to change their passwords, which would be a pretty big inconvenience for people that are using Mega, right? And it would probably cause people to think that Mega actually did have a security breach because you know, why else am I gonna have to change my password? Uh, so they didn't end up doing that. Instead, they just did their own mitigation method, which was to retrofit an integrity check that renders the primary attack vector, which is information gathering through corrupting the RSA private key when the user logs in, to be impractically difficult to exploit. So instead of being able to get the keys in 500 attempts, it's gonna take more. Not exactly sure how many, just a number that according to Mega would be impractically difficult to guess. So is this mitigation enough? Should you be worried about your files that are uploaded in Mega falling into the wrong hands or hackers injecting new files into your cloud storage? Well, as far as securing your files goes, if you use Mega, you're ultimately trusting them. And I don't know how much you know about the history of Mega, but it was started by this guy, Kim Schmitz, who later changed his name to Kim.com. He was the founder and he was the CEO of Mega Upload back when that's what it was called, back around like 2005 to 2012. But then a Chinese investor did a hostile takeover of the company. That Chinese investor was already wanted in China for fraud, and he just got the company by creating a bunch of fake companies and straw man accounts to acquire enough shares of Mega Upload to take it over. And then that guy's shares were ultimately seized by the New Zealand government. So basically the New Zealand government is in charge and control of Mega Upload now. Uh, so it's important to know that if you used Mega Upload back in the 2000s, it is not the same people running it anymore. And the founder of the company has said himself that he wouldn't trust Mega. So one thing that you should do at the very least, whether you trust Mega or not, or whether you're using any cloud storage provider that isn't one that you set up yourself and that you have control over the systems, is encrypt your files yourself before uploading them if you want to be certain that someone can't look through them. Because at the end of the day, it's really difficult to 
trust any company that's hosting things for you on their servers to not have some way to access it. But if all of that you're uploading are encrypted zip files that require a password to unlock them once they've been downloaded to your system, then there's nothing for them to see. So keep that in mind next time you upload some files to somebody's cloud that you don't ultimately control. Like and comment, attack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey. Have a great day.